Charo Santos breaks her silence on Chris Aquino's transfer. ABS-CBN's chief content officer, Charo Santos finally broke her silence on Chris Aquino's decision to leave the Capamalia network after almost 20 years. It can be recalled that Chris Aquino, after months of leave from work to spend time with her family, announced on Instagram she has already resigned from the said network and has thanked ABS-CBN for the many opportunities she had been given. Charo Santos on the other hand, denied the rumors of having ill feelings towards Aquino, and has released a statement via text message saying, I wished her all the best and thanked her for all the years that she has worked for ABS-CBN and acknowledge that she has given so much relief and happiness, and delighted our viewers. Kadit na sino ang mag decide malas, like Aga, Bulak, Sharon, Kuneta, and Willie, Revi Lam, Wala Akong Pag Durandam, Kasi Impertanti Kung Son Sila Masaya. She added, When asked about whether Kino would still be welcome if she decides to come back, Santos answered, Of course, the doors of ABS-CBN are always open to people who want to work with us again. But you wait for the stars to align for it to happen. It's not the decision of just one person. And, yes, Chris is welcome back anytime. Meanwhile, Aquino will be working with APT Entertainment, Inc. which works closely with ABS-CBN's rival, GMA7. Invite you to watch the video. Dudert fires thousands of former Aquino appointees to eliminate corruption. Change is coming. This was the principle of President Dudert since from the very beginning. When he assumed office, he made sure that this was easily manifested in his appointees and initial decisions. Truly, there were many firsts in his inauguration. Aside from not inviting the Vice President Lenny Bobredo, he invited the rallyist outside to have a talk with him hours after the ceremony. And the changes just keep coming. He started firing different appointees of the former president as per his statement, on Monday, August 22nd, I will declare all positions in the government that were presidential appointments all throughout the country, I will declare your positions vacant. He fired everyone in the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, LFRB, and the Land Transportation Office, LTO, which were both known for its corruption. He also targeted the Government Service Insurance Corporation, GSIS, and criticized them for being slow to action on insurances of public school teachers policemen, soldiers, and other government personnel. It was a mass firing but he was unmoved of the criticisms he received thereafter. He remains unfazed of his tough stance of fighting corruption and warned those government officials who will try to do acts which are not beneficial to the Filipino citizens. By these, he continues to be loved by over 16 million people who voted for him. Indeed, change has come. Invite you to watch the video. Confirmed coup being planned against President Dudert. Who's behind this? Find out here. Communications Secretary Martin Andoner confirmed a coup d'etat plan against President Rodrigo Dudert. As of the moment the administration is still cracking down suspects. Andoner said that a high-level cabinet who's in New York for travel told him about the said plot of Filipino Americans to get rid of Dudert by January 2017. Without name-dropping, he said that the plotter should think twice. I have received information from credible source in the United States. Yes, we have names but I don't want to mention it. We are looking at it seriously. We are investigating it, Andoner said. Whoever is planning an ouster or coup d'etat just be careful with what you do. Think twice. It's not lawful to bring down the government, he added. Though Andoner did not mention who is their credible source. Media men think that it's either Foreign Secretary Perfecto Yase Jr. or Presidential Spokesperson Ernesto Abello for they are the only cabinet members who's in U.S. as of the moment. Senator Peter Allen Quijatano revealed and pointed out that Senator Lila de Lima's probe on extrajudicial killings is part of the Liberal Party's plan B to remove the president from his seat. President Dudert even hinted the Liberal Party to be the mastermind of this coup d'etat plan against his administration. Invite you to watch the video. This five-year-old girl managed to stay calm as she calls 911 to help her father who's suffering from a heart attack. Five-year-old little girl from Indiana, 
USA has managed to stay calm when her father suffered from heart attack and she's the only one with him. Her dad was able to dial the emergency number, however, he wasn't able to speak so the little girl took over the phone. The five-year-old girl named Savannah then remained calm in the situation. She talked to the dispatcher calmly and when the dispatcher told her to unlock the door she said, OK, I am going to go don't worry dad. The next conversation she had with the dispatcher was so cute especially when she told him that she's still wearing pajamas and she had to get dressed when the rescuers came. When she'll go and change her clothes, the dispatcher told her to just stay with her dad instead. She even called their dog and asked him to be with them. When the dispatcher asked if her dad was okay, she said, so far so good. Stay calm, dad. It has just been proven that in situations like this, it's best for you to be like Savannah, to stay calm and look forward to positive results. Invite you to watch the video. Sorongan, Pesco's Prevail and Cebu Leg of Milo Marathon, a shout of encouragement from the coach of Olympian Mary Joy Table pushed Rafa Sorongan to work harder to clinch her back-to-back -back 21K women's title in the Cebu Leg of the 40th National Milo Marathon, Sunday, September 25th. The race started and ended at the vast grounds of the Cebu City Sports Center. Sorongan, who only had a week to continue her training after a bout of flu for two weeks, said that 40 minutes into the race and while she was near the Gesano Country Mall in Banlad, she was already feeling tired. It was then that she saw John Philip Duenas, Tables coach, who shouted encouragement at her, Saj Lang, Kanya Lang. Just go on, you can do it. Mao Judd to Ang Naka Push Nako, Ang Jishagad Nai Philip, Sorongan said. It was what pushed me, those words shouted by Philip. Not only did the 25-year-old marathoner top the Milo Marathon Cebu leg for the second straight year, but she also approved her best time, registering 1.26 and 27 seconds. When she crossed the finish line last year, her time was at 1.29 and 5 seconds. Sorongan said she had wanted to win but was not expecting a back-to-back -back title, since she missed training for two weeks due to illness. She was only able to resume training a week before the race. The night before the race, Sorongan was also suffering from hypersidity and even vomited just before the competition started. The JRA surplus-sponsored runner hails from Koranidal in Sultan Qudarat but has been based here in Cebu since 2014. Second time's the charm. Meanwhile, the men's division saw a new title holder in Inagaran, Negros Occidental native Rafael Pescos, who crossed the finish line with a time of 1.14 and 1 second. The first time that the 22-year-old raced in a Milo 21K was in the 2010 Bacullet Leg, where he placed eighth. He then opted to compete in the 5K and 10K races in 2013 and 2014, respectively, in Iloilo, topping both. Last year, he raced in the Bohol leg and once again reigned supreme in the 10K. This year, Pesco's decided to return to the 21K and prevented Cebu's Noel Tiller from clinching his third straight title in the event. Tiller was leading in the first 3K but Pesco's caught up with him, and from there never relinquished the lead until the finish line. Tiller eventually came in third with 1.17 and 23 seconds. Pesco said he wasn't expecting to clinch the title as what he was aiming for was just to qualify for the national finals in Iloilo on December 4. Race Assessment Cebu leg organizer Ricardo Ballestero said the race was the smoothest so far among all the Milo races that he has ever organized, especially with the support coming from the government and police. Some 200 policemen were deployed along the race route to ensure the participants' safety. It was the smoothest. No accidents, no untoward incidents. It was the best so far. While in a hospital, no one was brought to the hospital, Ballestero said. Milo Sports executive Andrew Neri also pointed out that the atmosphere was very festive. First time that I felt na waling stress. First time na hindi kami kinabahan. After what happened in Davao, every time we have a race kinikabahan kami but for some reason, here pairing Hindi Naman Nasip Yun. Ang Saya. Ang Saya NG Atmosphere, Nari said. It's the first time that I felt there was no stress. It's the first time that we didn't feel nervous. After what happened in Davao, the bombing, 
Every time we have a race, we are nervous, but for some reason, here we did not feel that. It's festive. The atmosphere is festive. He added that Cebu is really a very happy place to run, as participants in the 21K came from all over the country. Aiming to be like Boston Marathon. The race gathered 17,414 participants. Although lower by about 4,000 participants from previous events, Ballestero said that the number of participants in the 10K and 21K categories actually increased. Nari also said they appreciate that participants consider the Milo Marathon a top-notch race. We bring our learnings from abroad in the hopes of establishing a world-class race. We are happy with the perception that it is the best of the best because the direction for the Milo Marathon is for it to become a must-run race, to become the Boston Marathon in the Philippines, he added. This year, the Milo Marathon partnered with the Philippine Athletics Track and Field Association, POTAFA, which inspects all of Milo's race routes. List of winners 21K Men Rafael Pescos, 114 and 1 second, Michael Largo, 117 and 3 seconds, Noel Tiller, 117 and 23 seconds, 21K Women Rufus Orongan, 126 and 27 seconds, Cressel Cadian, 132 and 14 seconds, Sandra Soliano, 146 and 26 seconds, 10K Men Abraham Kiriot Kalimo, 3302, Ariel Sabala 3458, Jason Paytayao, 3530, 10K Women. Carla Kosp, 4952, Ru Reinhard Panabin, 5013, Rona Lake Alali, 5219, 5K Men. John Cliff de Willosen, 1615, John Darrell Manos, 1646, Mark Dami Denoy, 1654, 5K Women. Mary Joy Lobernus, 1845. Cherry Andrin, 1942, Karen Andrea Manian, 2002, 3K Men. Ken Lloyd Gabino, 1117, Carl Wayne Dichos, 1117, Kirk Nans Allison, 1125, 3K Women. Moira Francis Iridiano, 1158, Jessalakia, 1218, Christelle Lason, 1313. Thank you for watching videos like you remember the channel register and comment below. Thank you.